Kinder, um, a member of the Hampshire Workers' Rights Committee, Jobs with Justice, and also a member of the River Valley Market. Um, we're gathered here today to celebrate and acknowledge um, the employers that have signed on to the Right to Organize resolution. Um, and the Hampshire Workers' Rights Committee was the committee that was tasked with making sure that this resolution didn't just become something that was passed and had no significance in our community, but rather um, worked to make sure that employers signed on to it and also used it as a tool that it, when employees want to form a union, to bring this resolution to the employers and ask them to sign on to it so that the workers can have a uh, neutral environment to form their union. So I just want, in case folks aren't familiar, I'm just going to read a, a few key points of the resolution that um, these employers sign on to and then uh, read a list of, of the employers that have thus far signed on. Um, so the resolution calls upon employers to recognize the rights of those who work for them either directly or indirectly to be treated with dignity, to be paid a living wage, and to work in a healthy, safe, and secure workplace. To respect that the question to unionize or not is for employees to decide and to agree not to express an opinion either pro or con on the merits of unionization. To abide by their employee's decision when a majority indicates by either card check, an election supervised by the NLRB or other neutral body petition or other public statement that it supports union representation and engage in collective bargaining to achieve a written agreement without undue delay. To refrain from abusing National Labor Relations Board elections and appeals by using them as a means for delaying or avoiding representation for their employees and refrain from abusing the rights of undocumented immigrant workers. So if anyone is interested in seeing the full resolution, we do have copies here today. Um, I'm going to just also read a list of those employers, not all who were able to attend today, who have signed on um, to the resolution. Um, Alexis Design, Anchor House of Artists, Bravo Golf Aviation, Broadside Bookshop, Collective Copies, DeLong Construction, Haymarket Cafe, the Laughing Tomato, Law Offices of Jesse Adams, Lester Newman and Nasser, Media Education Foundation, Northampton Veterinary Clinic, Raven Used Books, Sasson, Turnbull, Ryan and Hoos, Unite Clockworks, Unite Footwear, River Valley Market, Stop and Shop, AT&T, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, I would now like to introduce um, Edan Donraj, who's going to speak to, um, he's a member of the Hampshire Workers' Rights Committee and Western Mass Jobs with Justice, and he's going to speak to um, where the inspiration came to work on this resolution and get it passed through the Northampton City Council. Hi, good morning, everyone. So yeah, my name is Edan. If I haven't met everyone formally, hi, nice to meet everyone. Nice everyone to be here this morning, uh, important occasion. Um, so I've been... Uh, a union organizer in some form or fashion for at least the past four years, but I've been a working person um, for the past 15. And uh, this campaign, this issue is so important because work is important and work matters and how, more importantly, how we work. Um, you know, arguably we spend most of our waking hours at work or going to work, or preparing to go to work, or coming home, or arguing about it with someone we love. Or... So, you know, it affects every component of our life. It affects our identity, it's who we are. So when people form unions, I personally feel they do it because people deserve rights and power over the basic things that affect their most of their life. That's why you form union. They do it because of dignity and, and self-respect for their lives. Uh, that's where you start. But unfortunately, what usually happens when you do that, the norm practice is an employer will fight back or what's put on what's called an anti-union campaign where they call everyone in one by one and persuade you against it tactfully or not so tactfully. And they have captive audience meetings where they address everyone and smear the union, they have uh, total control to send emails home or letters or promote people. 
um, that have been, you know, maybe the, the force of the union, anything to break it. And this is, and it's, they're quite often successful now. I've experienced that firsthand, and it's not fun. I'll tell you what, it's humiliating. Uh, you lose friends over, you lose sleep. You start to feel very alienated, and you wonder if you even did the right thing to begin with. And yes, I have a lot of sadness in me from that. Uh, and you know what? In our community, it's not just you know businesses, whatever that do this. This is this is the norm for nonprofits. This is the norm for so-called progressive organizations. It's a it's a normal practice um, until today. So you know, I feel very inspired looking at everyone that's so supportive, knowing the, the businesses that support this, because I look to it as uh, a, a, a true act of courage that uh, when you do business in Northampton and we uh, call ourselves a progressive community, that means business is done a certain way as well. That means we're going to treat each other as respect. I mean, workers recognize the importance and benefit of, <laughs> obvious benefit of employers, but the same is reciprocal for businesses to workers, and that we recognize that when we work together, it's good for our community and our economy, but not just that, it's the right thing to do. So everyone here today, all the businesses, they deserve the utmost respect and recognition for doing something that's right and important. Thank you. Um, as Rose said, I'm the city council president, and every time I hear that invoked, I'm as startled as most people. It doesn't. <laughs> um, I, I actually came up through retail systems in Northampton. I, I've never owned a business and never been a business manager. I've been a retail employee working for an employer who paid a living wage. And it was why I was able to stay in Northampton and, and consequently become the council president. So I don't know, you could blame Pleasant Street Video in some small part for the fact that I'm in governance now. I work, I am, I am wearing two hats. I'm here as the council president. I'm also, and actually I didn't even know this until in until uh, John invited me that, that uh, the Media Education Foundation was one of the uh, agencies that you're acknowledging. And I w used to be on the board of Media Education Foundation and <clears throat> one of the principal criteria that we, all, that we frequently discussed was fairness and equity for the employees. And it's nice to have that recognized. Now I'm an employee, now I'm, I, I just, I, work at a job that didn't exist five years ago. I'm the social media coordinator, which means I go on Facebook <laughs> and someone pays me. <laughs> the new labor. I'm the face of new labor. I, the middle class exists because unions existed. We used, to, we used to have a class of essentially laborers, mercantile class, and the Gilded Age robber barons. And because of the establishment of unions, we actually developed the middle class that we want all over the place. Every single political campaign invokes the middle class. But it's becoming a mythological creature. It's, it's and largely in part because of the former Gilded Age tycoons or the Gilded Age tycoon wannabes uh, have done whatever they can to suppress and, and subvert any union influence on the protection of, uh, of workers and the people who work and strive and create the middle class. And I, in, so Northampton, when we voted on this resolution, it was, I mean, the frustration with resolutions is they're not law and they, they don't have the power of law. What they do have is the power of the express will of the community. And, and it also provokes the conversation and the discussion and expands the conversation beyond the whisper campaigns that Dan was talking about. The, uh, it takes it out to the larger venue, which is hopefully the public that listens. The public, the middle class, this middle class we're supposed to be talking to. The middle class we're supposed to be protecting by eliminating unions, it's, it's counterintuitive. It doesn't make any sense, but it's been a very effective campaign so far. So Northampton, is, the, the council was unabashed. They voted, I believe, unanimously. Uh, they did good. They voted unanimously, <laughs> and 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 we have a we have a disparate group in, in the city council. That it reflects a number of of political beliefs in the in the community, and they all.
all spoke, and I think almost every counselor spoke to this issue, about how important it is that the fact that employees, workers, have the right to organize, have the right to a fair and equitable pay that allows them to sustain lives and sustain their membership here in this community. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was proud to be associated with that. I'm, I'm flattered to be invited to speak here today and that we would like to see this, I will speak for the council in this regard, we would like to see this go beyond just us declaring something. I want us to enact something. I want us to actually continue to create by law the protections that we hope that uh, all, all workers enjoy in, the, uh, in this community, so that, that I particularly enjoy. So thank you very much. from the Northampton Human Rights Commission. They're the group that's tasked with holding employers accountable to this resolution. So, thank you, Rick. I have Rick. I better move this down if I can. So, I'm here for the Human Rights Commission, and we are very proud to be a part of this. And uh, on behalf of the commission, I want to thank the Jobs and Justice people for making it happen. Uh, and all the other groups and individuals uh, and the employers who have signed on so far for getting this started. Um, on the commission, we use as our touchstone for human rights in general, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, and because of that, I wanted to read a little piece of it that applies to this, which it's a wonderful document. If you haven't seen it, you really should look at it or look at it again. So the Universal Declaration says, one, everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and to protection against unemployment. Two, everyone without any discrimination has the right to equal pay for equal work. This is quite a while ago they said this. It's not, <laughs> not since uh, women's rights. Um, three, everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration. I hate that word ensuring for himself and his family an existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, by other means of social protection. And four, everyone has the right to form and to join trade unions for the protection of his interests. Um, so that's pretty clear, I guess. Um, and I really, anything else I would say, we just repeat what other people are saying, but we do believe that if these rights and other rights are made real for everyone. It makes for a better community. It's not just good for the workers, it's good for the employers, it's good for the whole community. Uh, it's a healthier society. Uh, thanks. The, the group that helped to write this um, resolution, you know, the Hampshire Worker Rights Committee, worked a lot with the Human Rights Commission to nail down what the actual language would be. So thanks for all of your work on that. Um, next, I'd like to invite up um, Mary Ford, our former fantastic mayor of Northampton and member of the Western Mass Jobs with Justice Workers' Rights Board. Uh, thanks, Rose. Um, as a recovering politician, uh, <laughs> this is a topic really dear to my heart as well as my lifelong personal history of work. Um, so I invite anyone in the group uh, to go like this <laughs> once I've uh, taken more than my allotted uh, time because Rose is on the corner of my eye. Um, I, I want to take off from uh, that uh, statement of the UN. Uh, it's actually called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and it's fascinating. I checked, it was 1948, 65 years ago if my math is correct, so I was a toddler. Uh, and I suspect that Eleanor Roosevelt maybe was representing the U.S. at the time. But just think about leaders around the world. And what we're looking at today, leaders promoting austerity for the public uh, on, on behalf of rescuing the financial uh, upper level system. Um, at that point in time, when I was a toddler, leaders around the world uh, could come together and talk about uh, the respect for the dignity of the human person.
person. And in that same declaration, it says no one can take away your property rights. And it also lists property as one of the reasons that can't be used for inequality of persons. So the belief that the dignity and the justice involved in the, uh, recognizing the common humanity in every single individual, that that is the basis for freedom, which is what the preamble states. We'd like to talk in our country about freedom, but the basis for really being free is when every individual has earned or doesn't have to earn, is assumed uh, to have equal respect. And so all this list of other rights um, comes from that. And uh, one of the things that's mentioned with the right to organize, the right to hold a job, is that people, and this comes from our jobs, this comes from our work, that the point of the jobs and the work and the economic system is so that every human being has a standard of living adequate to health and well-being of themselves and their family. And it includes, as you go on, adequate food, clothing, housing, and medical care. Now, when I was an elected official, uh, and before that, an activist of various uh, sorts, as well as a, a worker in uh, non-elected offices, uh, it, it seems to me that much of what we struggle with if you're a progressive person in your workplace or your political action, we struggle with this not imminent crisis like the financial breakdown in 08 and 09, but the ongoing decades-long loss of taken for granted standards of living, what Bill said, the middle class that politicians like to refer to. We have remnants of it. I have a nephew who, oh my God, my age, he's almost ready to retire from UPS. He can support himself in retirement because of the union standing of his truck driving and customer service that he's done for most of his adult life. He can be a homeowner and a respected community member, if that's what we mean by middle class. And I hated it in public service. I was on the opposite side of the table from Northampton City Employees Unions. But I knew, and people who worked with me in human resources knew, that you can treat those folks with respect. You're as aware as anyone, and more so, of uh, the amount of their life they dedicate to working for the public. And that their unions uh, have to be respected as their legitimate voice. That's federal law, as well as part of the Universal Declaration of, of Human Rights. And it always bothered me when people you know, in-laws or, or uh, people from the public in, in locally or somewhere else would say, but, you know, their packages are too rich. Their uh, retirement is too generous. Their health care is too generous. Folks, the problem never was, and you can see this when, you, when you're in local government and state government. We have a representative here, Michael Leo. Um, the problem is that everyone doesn't have that standard. And it goes back to, well, I believe in expressing the community voice, and that's why I'm here and I'm, and I'm affiliated with the workers' rights boards. It, it goes back to our employment being the basis for setting up our communities and our families and all, all the extra struggles that most of us do to try to rescue the environment, to promote um, equal rights for all types of families, to make sure that uh, children have the right to education and not lifelong debt if they try to go to college. All those allied struggles start 
with the fact that we collectively have lost power, the majority of the people, because in our jobs we're no longer represented by unions. So the new kinds of unions may have to be different. They, they may, uh, they, they definitely are working with uh, sometimes very different kind of employers. Um, Bill doing uh, Facebook every day probably doesn't have to worry as much about carpal tunnel syndrome as those of us did who spent eight hours at keyboards uh, a few years back. He can use a stylus or uh, whatever. But um, the struggles go on to be treated as a human being and um, <laughs> with respect to personhood, dignity, and rights irrespective of being a property owner. And that's something where we collectively can not only educate our communities in Northampton and the surrounding area, but we can stand with people who face illegal retribution at work and other forms of discrediting and disempowering the inherent right of human beings to have a voice at their work. So thank you, it's great to be here. I'd now like to bring up uh, Jeff Jones from the Hampshire Franklin Central Labor Council and also United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1459. Thank you, Rose. Um, thanks everybody for coming out. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I would only um, second what has already been said, especially um, what uh, Council President Dwight said about it's great to be able to pass a resolution and actually have some enforcement mechanism to see it realized. Um, this is a, a great step along those lines as far as why we're here. Um, United Food and Commercial Workers is the recognized union here at River Valley Market. We were voluntarily recognized last year um, by a neutral third party, another former mayor, um, Claire Higgins. Um, we've had good faith bargaining ever since. We hope to wrap up a contract in the short term. Um, I'm also here, as I said, from the Hampshire Franklin Labor Council. Um, we hope to expand this uh, beyond the employers that were named today and continue to expand um, the resolution. So. That's it. Thanks for coming out. Bring up uh, Kitty Callahan from the Northampton Living Wage Coalition. Uh, good morning to all of you who are out here in the cold. Um, we've actually, Northampton Living Wage Coalition recently changed our name to Living Wage Western Mass in recognition that um, it, it shouldn't just be Northampton that has a living wage, you know, so maybe this campaign may also at some point decide to do that. Um, our, our mission is to um, enable every employee to earn at least a living wage. And we believe that this, this campaign that is being kicked off today, that that furthers that mission. Um, Unions have a tradition of um, getting better wages for employees and also getting um, cost of living increases for employees. For low wage workers who are not earning a living wage, those increases are critical. There are, there are workers in Northampton who are struggling to make ends meet. They, they struggle to pay their rent, their utilities, and to put food on their tables. Um, so, so, so what this campaign does is very important. It's also important, um, you know, hearing what Idan said about about the difficulty of um, forming unions or joining a union. Um, you know, when he was do doing it, I, I can't imagine what it's like for a low wage worker to make that decision. And so, having employers who are who are kind of putting down the welcome mat and saying that if you want to unionize, that's okay with us. That, that's, a bit, that's a big step for our efforts in terms of getting every employee a living wage. So 
So I also want to invite you all to our fourth annual Living Wage Week celebration that will take place on Tuesday, April 9th at 7 p.m. at the Unitarian Society. And if you have a place where you can put a po poster, I invite you to ask me for one because I have a beautiful poster that you can put up. And I hope to see some of you there. Thank you very much. Um, so, you know, we chose to be here today at the River Valley Market because we were really just so happy with um, our new co-op voluntarily recognizing their employees to form a union and we thought this was the perfect place to begin our celebration and acknowledging their efforts. So, thank you, Rosha. the shortest yet. Um, so I am so happy to host this today. Um, I don't know if everyone knows that the labor movement and the cooperative movement started um, back in the 1800s with the Industrial Revolution, and they really started together. So we have a long history of, uh, of uh, uh, working together in different ways to make people's lives better. Back in the um, 1840s, um, the very first food co-op that started was started by weavers in the weaving factory. And some of you may know this story, but there are 28 weavers. The only store they could buy from was the company store. And that company store put chalk in the flour. They set the scale to weigh heavy. They cheated the workers, gave them bad food, and there was no other choice. And so the workers got together and decided to create their own uh, cooperative, their own store that was owned by the customer. And um, the union gave them a contribution to help help that get going. So we have a long, long history of working together. Unions with people working together, workers working together, cooperatives with uh, consumers working together, and the partnership between the two is perfect in food. So I'm very happy to host this. Um, for us, um, it really wasn't a question when the workers said that they wanted to organize. We welcome that, and we are looking for a, a, a partner with, uh, with labor that builds a stronger community, and we welcome the UFCW as our partner in the workplace. So thank you very much, and thank you everyone for coming. Michael Aleo from uh, Lesser Newman and Nasser Attorneys at Law. Nice to see you. Howdy, my name is Michael. I'm an attorney, and I sue employers who violate our <laughs> state and federal employment and labor laws. Um, happily so. <laughs> in truth, whenever I get a call from an employee, my first question, or amongst my first questions, is do you have a union? And things are always so much easier when there's a union involved. Uh, one of the slogans, I'm not always a fan of slogans, but one of the slogans I've come to appreciate uh, is that facts tend to have a liberal bias, uh, but when it comes to the economy and when it comes to workers' rights, facts have a union bias, and studies always bear it out that unions make the middle class stronger. President Dwight um, couldn't be more right. Uh, when you have unions, you have a middle class, and the decline of unions perfectly correlates with the de decline of middle class. When I represent an individual, I represent the individual, not the economy, not the middle class, and all also protect individuals like nothing else that we have. So I really appreciate all your efforts, um, and thanks so much. Quick announcement, and then um, if everyone would follow me over uh, to the entrance, we're going to place the first decal um, here at the River Valley Market. Thank you, Rose. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this is quite an event. I'm very proud to be here. This is my neighborhood. I live very close to here, and I've watched this quarry uh, develop since the beginning of its beginning. I'm here today. It's very difficult to follow all of these speeches that preceded me, and I agree with them 100%. I, myself, am a retired operating engineer. I was with the Operating Engineers Local Number 98 for about 35 years. I strongly believe in the 
unions, I strongly believe that everyone should be organized for many reasons. But that's not why I'm here to make this announcement. I'm the executive director of Western Mass COOSH, which stands for Coalition for Occupational Safety and Health. And one of our goals is to reduce accidents, injuries, deaths, and being affected uh, and infected on the jobs. The, on the 25th, 26th, and 27th of this month in three different locations, the 25th here in Northampton, we will have our annual Workers Memorial Day. Workers Memorial Day is recognized by labor for the around that time, the 28th of April was the signing of OSHA. OSHA was was brought into into law about that time and about on that day. On the celebration of that, we usually have a gathering and we re like to recognize in the Commonwealth people that have been killed on the jobs on the, uh, in the Commonwealth at, while at work or returning from work or going to work. This year I'm very proud to say, and it's something we've strived for, the list is quite a bit lo quite a bit shorter than it has been in the past. We have, when I first started in this uh, with the uh, OSHA people, we had 125 names. I think we're down to somewhere around 50, if that many. That, e that in even includes people that were in Afghanistan that were killed in combat from the Commonwealth. This year we're doing something a little bit more. We're getting into some serious injury announcements. We're also getting into the fact that in announcing the people that have been infected on the jobs by either poisonous or toxic materials, such as asbestos, lead, and that sort of thing. Up until recently, with the campaign of a lot of people, and I have to bring this to you from uh, Dr. David Michaels, who I spoke with just yesterday on the phone. He is the uh, administrator of the OSHA Council for the Department of Labor in, down in Washington. The fact is that OSHA hadn't been tracking the amount of people that were passing away because of being afflicted on the job and, uh, and infected and that sort of thing. So this year we're recognizing that as much as we can and it's quite a study. But for those of you that want to, would, could possibly join us, we're going to be at the City Hall steps in Northampton here on the 25th, which is a Thursday at noontime. And we need all the support we can get. We usually. In Northampton, we have a small parade down Main Street. A proclamation is read by the mayor, and we have the reading of the names at the Hall of Records uh, down on King Street. So I'd like to see as many of you as I can here. Also in Springfield, we're going to be at the Teamsters Hall inside the following Friday at 1 o'clock. And then on Saturday of that week, the 27th, we're going to be at the, right just off the Main Street in Pittsfield at a park where there's a memorial there set up for the dedication of what we're doing. And um, I'd like to see as many of you there as I can because we need support. It's quite an event. Thank you. Follow over to the entrance and we can place our first decal. Uh, Straight? <laughs> I don't know. I'm taking yeah. pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. good. Yay! Yay! Oh, wait, I'm not that far. I know, I'm like, wait, that's a really big sign. Daddy! 